This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our time of prayer and Bible study on this Friday, 26th of April, 2024. Let's be quiet for a few moments as we recognize that we have come into God's presence. An opening prayer. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be glory and praise forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Psalm this morning for us is Psalm 51. That'll be read. By Sir David Sibshire. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, yet you desired faithfulness, even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Saviour, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem, then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is great psalm of penitence and of seeking God's forgiveness. And you'll recognize many of the verses that we use in our times of confession, in our worship services. The 
Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 35, verse 20, going through to chapter 36, verse 7. Materials for the tabernacle. So it's Exodus chapter 35, beginning to read from verse 20. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewellery of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple or scarlet yarn or fine linen or goat hair, ramskins, dyed red or other durable leather brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord and everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat's hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord a free will offering for all the work and the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. And Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord's chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he's filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. And he's given both him and Oholiab, son of Ashiyasmak, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. So Bezalel, Aholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary, or to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Aholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability, and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings that the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more, because what they had already had was more than enough to do all the work. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I often hear the accusation that the church is all about money. It's not primarily about money. But the priority is to bring people to really know Jesus Christ. 
And to do that, the church, not unlike any other organisation, needs funds to minister to people. At the beginning of chapter 35, it is God who tells Moses to organise an offering. There's no compulsion to give. Everyone is willing, everyone who's willing, is being asked to give expensive things like gold and silver, right down to goat's hair, all of which would be required to build the tabernacle. We also notice that as well as asking for gifts, there was a requirement for people who were gifted in design and manufacturing to offer their time and talents, even to the point of teaching others their craft. We feel a strong sense of togetherness amongst the Israelites. God raises up Bezalel and Ohelia. Many churches are fortunate to have members who are skilled at some trade or another, which saves hundreds of pounds, saving them employing someone else to do the work. Now, have you ever wondered how the Israelites amassed large amounts of gold, silver, and jewellery? Well, the answer is in Exodus chapter 12, verses 35 and 36. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed towards the people, and they gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. And then here are the verses from Paul's letter, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless us abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that we need, we will abound in every good work. A New Testament readings from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 4, reading from verse 14. It's Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling, unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendants and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, position, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly, I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows 
in Israel in Elijah's time. And when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land, yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet none of them was cleansed, only Naaman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having been tested in the wilderness by the devil, Jesus returns to Nazareth, his hometown. Verse 1 tells us he returned in the power of the Spirit, indicating possibly a divine transportation, being in one place minute, one minute, then finding oneself miraculously in another place. On another occasion, Jesus appeared on the other side of Lake Galilee with no boat in sight. Jesus is well received initially until he goes to the synagogue and reads from Messiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 2, verses the Jews would know well as messianic prophecy. Then Jesus' words hit them like a bombshell. Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, Jesus is saying, I am the long-awaited Messiah. The crowd changed their hearts towards Jesus and are furious. Possibly because of the story that Jesus tells them about Elisha and Naaman the prophet, who were not Jews. And here Jesus is saying that he's come to all people, not just the Jews. So that was what made the Jews angry in the synagogue that day. So they were furious, even taking Jesus to the top of a hill with the intention of throwing him down. But the time has not yet come for Jesus to die. God had further plans for him. So by some supernatural power, Jesus walks right through the crowd and goes on his way. Come now to our time of prayer. And the response, the Lord hear us, is Lord graciously hear us. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. Bless and empower Heavenly Father, your church worldwide, which confesses Jesus as your son. Where she's persecuted, bring hope. Where ministers are despondent, Grant them peace and encouragement. We pray for our bishops, John and Martin, for our archdeacons. Bless, protect and uphold our clergy, Garth, Ian and Linda, serving you in our parish. From the Diocese and Prayer Diary, we pray for the parish of Starport and Wilden, praying for the shared work of both congregations in their warm space and happy memories cafe, for their midweek worship and lunch club, with their gather service for their church school. Bless their clergy, Kerry Sai, a one-time member of our church, together with their LLMs, Sandra Batty, Richard Standing, and Kerry's husband, Phil Sale. Lord, hear us. Lord, Graciously hear us. The next three prayers are from the Prayer Diary of Care, Christian Action, Research and Education.
Holy Spirit, we thank you for raising up intercessors to pray blessing on our schools, on all who learn and work in them, often facing difficulties and always in need of your wisdom and strength. Please continue to inspire Christians to make it a priority to pray for their local schools. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy Spirit, please inspire and sanctify your people as we worship you with music, especially those who write songs and hymns, play instruments and lead others in praise. We pray for those who serve in this way to glorify Jesus as they plan, practice and present their music to the congregation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we intercede that the UK Parliaments and the Northern Ireland Assembly will reach righteous conclusions on issues of life and liberty, especially as they consider our freedom of expression, religion and belief, proposed legislation on assisted suicide, further liberalisation of abortion laws and other ethical concerns. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Heavenly Father, we now pray for all who are in any kind of need. We particularly pray for John Stain, Sonny Samuel, Phil Parker, Pat, Stephen Watson, Mary Collett, Pam Hurst, Frankie Fry, Lee Rushton. And those with long-term illnesses, Mary Pramila, Graham Twist, Tia, Kate Bainbridge, Andrew Johnson, Alex Street, Peter Bartram, Michael Hawkins, Erica Dilja, Chris Tilly, Mark Brunner, Glynis Horton, Linda Grummet, June Gillett, Delia Davis, Roger, David Spencer, Irene Spencer, Anne Jones, Khalida, Ellis Iliff, Helen Wilson, Barbara Arneal, Dennis Edwards, Tom Hancock, Sandra and Jim Swansborough, Mayor, a seven-year-old girl with lung cancer. Ira Dutton. Barbara Badger. Tony Green. Mike Gallagher. Jean Kesterton. And Lynn Davis. Heavenly Father, wrap your loving arms of healing around them and bring them a peace and a comfort that no one else can give. And we pray for all those who grieve at this time, praying particularly for Noreen and Tony Yardley as they mourn the loss of Zoe, and for June Watton and daughters and her family, Karen, Dawn and Heather, as they mourn the loss of Brian. Being one made in this power of the Spirit, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So I thank you for joining with me in these past three days, and we'd love to see you at our morning 
service of communion on Sunday at 10.30. And our morning prayers will continue next Monday at 10 a.m. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. We go out into the world to walk in God's light and rejoice in God's love and to reflect his glory and the blessing of God the Father Almighty and the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us and those whom we love, now and forevermore. Amen.